Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the structure of plasma membrane, the widely accepted structure of plasma membrane is given the name of fluid mosaic model. Now you might be wondering why such a fancy name for the structure of plasma membrane fluid mosaic model. So we will talk about it and then we will get to know why this name. This model was postulated by uh, two scientists named Singer and Nicholson and they described this model as protein icebergs in the sea of lipids. So lipids all around and then that proteins are uh, present here and there. So that is how they described it. So if you have a sea and in that sea you have icebergs which are like quite big and they are either on the surface of the sea or inside the sea. So similar is the case here. Proteins can be either inside or on the surface of the lipids. So this is how the structure is. The structure which I explained you just now. So in this case Proteins are neither confined only to the surface nor do they form continuous layers. So that is one speciality of how proteins are distributed here. So you cannot say that okay they have they form continuous layers on the uh, surface. No. Sometimes some of them are on the surface whereas some of them are inside. Some of them are partially buried. So proteins are like randomly distributed. So they are basically distributed in a mosaic fashion. Mosaic, you know, right? You, you would have heard of this uh, doing mosaic on the floor. What is that? It just, it is like random distribution of those colored stones on the floor. That is called mosaic. So here also proteins are distributed randomly, neither on the surface nor completely below the surface. So that's why proteins are distributed like in a mosaic pattern. That is why the term mosaic. Now, why the term fluid now, fluid is because of the fluidity of the membrane. Now, this uh, plasma membrane which you see, it is not static. Here, the lipid molecules which you see, all these lipid molecules are linked to one another by bonds which are very, very weak. Now, since if the bond is very weak, then they can move laterally. Let us suppose if you have two objects, which are tied by a very thin thread and you, if you have the same two objects tied by a thick rod in which case the possibility of the objects being moved is more. Suppose now if wind blows what will happen this thin thread might get carried away by the wind so these objects might move but this thick rod will not be carried away by the wind so this will not move so if the bond between the lipid molecules is really really weak in that case there is a possibility that the lipid molecules can move laterally and that is what happens here in this membrane also since the bond joining the lipid molecules are very weak therefore the membrane is not static and it moves laterally now mobility is more and it is generally observed that the mobility is even more in membranes which have lesser cholesterol. It is not only the lip lipid molecules which can move, it has been found that the proteins can also move but much lesser than the lipids. So the movement in the protein molecules are not that evident but yes, the lipid molecules do move. Because of that, this membrane has a fluid nature. What is fluid? Anything that can flow is fluid. Now since the lipid molecules can move, this, I mean, this side also you have lipid, this side also you have lipids and they all can move laterally. So if everything is moving, you will feel as if it is flowing. And that is why it, it, it has said to be a fluid mosaic model. Fluid because the lipid molecules can move laterally due to the weak bonds. Mosaic because the proteins are arranged in a mosaic pattern. That is why the name fluid mosaic model. So this arrangement or this structure of plasma membrane is popularly accepted and popularly known as fluid mosaic model. Now, as I just discussed, structure of the plasma membrane is not static. Fluidity of the membrane is present. So, membrane has a fluid nature. 
Now, I'll also give you certain instances which will help you to uh, understand it better. That yes, like when I say for the first time that the plasma membrane can move, it it uh, sounds little weird because you might be thinking it is the boundary of a cell. How can it move? Boundaries generally don't move. But when I give you some of the uh, instances or some of the uh, activities or functions of the cell which actually gives a hint that the membrane is has a fluidity so fluidity of the membrane is important for cell growth when i talk about cell growth what happens the cell grows in size now let us suppose if this is a cell so that the cell grows in size like this like this so what is happening basically this cell membrane is also and en getting enlarged to accommodate the bigger size of the cell right you're getting my point so that means there is some amount of flexibility with the cell membrane which is allowing it to accommodate a larger cell that is possible because of the fluidity of the membrane because the membrane is able to move laterally so it is able to adjust the bigger size of the cell Similarly, you talk about cell division. What happens in cell division when the cell divides? These plasma membranes need to expand and contract during the cell movements involved during cell division. So that is also possible because of the fluidity of membrane. Secretion. So flow of materials through the plasma membrane is indicative of the fluidity of membrane. Now since the membrane is like slightly movable, that is why it becomes easy to for materials to pass through it and also to secrete substances. Formation of cell junctions. If you want to connect two cells, let us suppose this is one cell, this is another cell. If you want both of them to join, there has to be some flexibility from both the plasma membranes. And that is possible because of the fluidity of the membrane. So these are some of the uh, properties which favor the fact that plasma membrane is fluidic in nature to some extent. So this was all about the fluid mosaic model. Now that we have completely understood the semi-permeable behavior of plasma membrane as well as the structure of plasma membrane, let us quickly look at the functions which the plasma membrane perform. So the first and foremost function is protection of the cell. This membrane being the boundary has to protect the cell. Movement of substances in and out of the cell. When I say substances, it can be gases by diffusion or water by osmosis. And this movement can also happen by active transport as well as passive transport. So depending upon the need. Flexibility enables cell to engulf food and other materials from surroundings. As I said, since the membrane is quite flexible, the membrane can move. So movement of the membrane also helps to engulf food. For example, if you think of amoeba, what happens in case of amoeba? The shape of the body is irregular and it does not have a fixed shape. So it can change its shape. Let us suppose, let us suppose this blue colored thing which you see here, that is a food material and this is the amoeba. So what it does, it changes its shape as you can see here. So what is changing? It is not only amoeba which is changing, but the boundary is also changing. The plasma membrane is also changing. And gradually it changes its shape in such a way that the food material which was earlier outside has come in has come inside. So it has engulfed the food material and this became possible due to the flexible plasma membrane. Now this process in amoeba is known as endocytosis. So plasma membrane, these are some additional functions which are performed by the plasma membrane. But the basic function of plasma membrane is to ensure protection of the cell. And how does it ensure protection of the cell? By becoming selectively permeable. It does not allow anything and everything to pass across it. So with this, we will end our discussion on plasma membrane. I hope the concept of plasma membrane or cell membrane is now clear to you. This plasma membrane is found in all types of cells, whether it is plant cells or animal cells. Uh, in fact, when we will talk about prokaryotes, there also you will see plasma membrane is present. So with this, we'll end our discussion on plasma membrane. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, 
find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.